Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Saka here, and welcome back to another episode of Crusader Kings 2 for Absolute Beginners. When we last left off, our Chancellor was doing a whole lot of nothing down here in Glamorgan, so hopefully that will come to fruition this episode. We also have some truces expiring soon up here in Scotland. We can start to uh, corral that mainland, perhaps usurp the title of King of Scotland, and... As I was saying in the last episode, that might not be in our best interest because uh, when we die, what we, our oldest son, our heir, uh, Tannis Urcade, would be the king of Ireland. But, well, he might inherit all titles because we don't have a uh, another child. We are betrothed to Christine, who is 15 years old, and uh, she is going to turn 16... Oh, in like two days. So we will be married very shortly to our betrothed and then our children. Um, it'll be interesting to see. One week claim can be pressed on Croatia. We are not going to Croatia anytime soon. We're not holding a grand tournament. We're saving money for uh, mercenaries for possible invasion of England. We can righteous imprison Duke Conalan, which I don't see why we would want to. Press de jure ducal claims on the one province that England took from us. We're not going to press that quite yet. And we need a designated region. Someone who really likes us. Someone like our uh, cousin. That sounds excellent. Let's see. Do we have a commander we can assign as well? Yes, one commander. How are you? You're a scaredy cat. Oh, jeez. Just for now, I think we'll take Jelena as sort of a backup. We don't have that many good commanders, if I'm honest. But let's play, and Betroth should be able to wed. Yes, Betroth can marry. We'll lose 100 prestige from marrying uh, Lowborn, but there we go. So we can cre collect a tithe of 43 gold or get that 200 prestige back. We'll do that. And so now we have a wife, and we have fulfilled our ambition to get married. The next ambition we need to take, absolutely, well, have a son would be a logical one. And then I, we have to focus on that martial skill. We are going to, um, we're going to be at a disadvantage with our troop count as long as our martial skill is four. So we do not want that to be four anymore. All right, so we're still raising troops here in Moray. And the, we're one year, a year and a half away from the new administration. There we go. Finally, 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 we have our claim. Let's use it. That costs us a little bit of gold. And without further ado and no time to waste, let's us declare war on our claim for Glamorgan. Now we could claim it for the Countess. Interesting indeed. She likes us at 50. Uh, she currently owns the county of Dyfed. Now that's going to make her pretty strong. She isn't the Duke. Uh, Dimnian. They may go to war with one another, but we can hold another province ourselves. We can hold four more ourselves. So let's just claim this for us and uh, let the chips fall where they may. We shall claim Glamorgan there. And we are ready to go. Let's stand up our entire levy. And let's see if we can get them across to Dyfed fairly quickly. I don't know how many troops he has. 2,200. So we should be on point here. It probably would not hurt to raise up our vassal levies here. Let's get you all down here ready to go. And then the rest of y'all form up. We need to assign a commander here. So we need to be very careful. If Glamorgan stands up and immediately starts marching, we have to really pay attention to that. We can merge these two units together and start assigning our generals. Arcade is awesome. A thrifty clerk, but he's brave. We'll take that and good defense there. So Arcade will be leading the center and our flank. We want Talon. And on this flank, we shall take Jelena with her... Uh, combat skill let's go speed one so we can adapt is he going to march 
Okay, so he is going to try to pick off this. So we can be sneaky. He is going to get there 15 February. Let's pause right here and see if he's going to still try to march against these troops. And then right before 15 February, we'll stand them down. And hopefully by that time, the majority of our army will cross the strait. So we're sort of gaming them a little bit here. 9, 10. We want to do it at the absolute last second. 13, 14. Let's stand these guys down so we don't lose them and disband. And he's going to continue to march. Now, he doesn't have enough troops to siege that down, which is pretty encouraging. And it looks like he is going to, uh, to stay the course. Yeah, y'all are marching there, ready to go. 2580, once these 1300 troops come. Any second now. I'm sort of playing on low speed so I don't miss my opportunity. We, ha we have enough to probably take them right there with that 2580, but I want to make absolutely sure we have uh, numbers beat. And then we can dedicate an army to sieging down the territory and then getting the ping pongs down. So 4,000 troops, let's march. Let's make sure there are no uh, river crossings here between us and Gwent. So we are not... Let's make sure here. Between this county and Gwent... That's Gwynedd, that's Dyfed, that's Glamorgan. So yeah, that's the only river crossing from down there. So we should be good. The rest of these troops, I'll go ahead and have them merge up. And then their focus will be on the capital itself. So hopefully by the time our army gets there, these troops can be standing on his land and be ready to go. So 4,000, we got them outnumbered two to one with good generals on our flanks there we go and they didn't have very good generals on their flanks we're squishing them into the middle very fine very awesome indeed now if we can i don't know if he's leading troops if we can capture him that will be uh, pretty outstanding a daughter was born to our cousin that's all well and good now we are going to uh have plenty of troops here to siege this down. 3.2% every 12 days. This guy really won't have anywhere to run. So we'll use this big army to ping pong. Where is he going? Shrewsbury. Let us get to Shrewsbury while our vassal levies siege down that holding. And this war should be over fairly quickly. We've got them routed. We've got them on the run. They're taking heavy losses. Pursuit tactic. That's where our 532 cavalry come into play. Going to Worcester, then we shall go to Worcester as well. He has no province to return home to, thanks to our siege. Um, it's just going to be a matter of time before he just gets completely broken. And then for all intents and purposes, we could lower our vassal levies down. So we captured Ona Furch Grinwi. I don't think she was worth any war score, unfortunately, but we are capturing uh, people as we go. Which I guess could only help war score. Oh, and we were the defender. Oh, that's going to be an amazing bonus. A defender bonus. We had, we were all set up, ready to go. You're going to Warchester. Let's see if we can beat them there. Because if we can keep being the defender, uh, that's going to really play in our favor. Once again, we were the defender. Literally, as soon as the battle is over, we can pause the uh, pause the action. And beat them to the punch. Going back to Warwick. How's Siege going? 3.2. I don't believe I have a Siege leader. Oh, another defender. Yeah, we've got them on the ropes now. And I don't think he can even raise up any... Uh, any levy. Or even mercenaries. I don't know how rich he is. Only 188 gold. So he can't even afford mercenaries. This will be his last beck and call. We'll see if this provokes England at all. Um, 75, going back to Warwick. So these battles are doing quite well for the war score. With the defender again, we beat them just barely. 
They'll have no morale. We'll route them. I don't even think we're losing troops now. Yeah, one casualty per. We're definitely wiping them out, going to Worcester again. So we're bouncing them in between, and we're always the defender. It's only a matter of time before this entire army gets wiped out, and then we won't even get any war score from this. We need some good uh, siege events, however. So we captured heir to the bishopric of Landlolf. Don't know how that helps us at all. Still at 75% though, I don't believe we're gaining any war score uh, from these battles anymore. Definitely 320 troops are not enough to, to do any sort of damage. I'd like to wipe out the entire uh, army if I can. But we've already maxed out the war score from battles. I don't know if we get any additional war score from completely demolishing the army, but it looks as if. All right, training ground has been built. That is excellent. Only 67 troops, 48. Do they have an army left? No, they do not. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and march back to Glamorgan and then stand down the vassal levies so our um, vassals don't get too upset with us, but we don't need uh, that many at all to do the siege. And that's going to be 4.1 every 12 days. We could do this the, the easy way for manpower. So let's merge them all together, form a new unit. And we only want to see the liege levy here. Liege, 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 liege. So the barony of Leylin. That's a lot of liege levy. So is this all mine here? The Barony of Leyland, 1,900 troops. No, we can hold 3,300. Which ones are mine, I wonder? Duchess Marianne, Duchess, Countess, Mayor, Bishop, Duke, Duke, Geralt. We're King Aegil. We need to see the Tannis Urcade. We're Aegil, Barony of Leyland. So barony, barony. Any more, any more, any more. We've got plenty of liege levy, that is for sure. So that's 2,088 troops, I believe. You know what? Let's just stick with what we got. Let's merge them all together. Uh, keep this siege speed going at 4.1. This should be the final straw here. One extra percent every 12 days is nice. We'll go speed five while this siege ticks down. The war will be ours. We will seize this last little pocket of the Duchy of Poise, and then we can focus our entire attention north and eastward. My wife, Christine, is pregnant. Prince Fothad is asking us to deal with an assassination attempt. All right, so Fothad gets a strong claim on the county of Thoman. That is not what we want because that is, well, we don't own Thoman. Who, who currently owns Thoman? That's Desmond, there's Thoman. So Prince Gu, or Earl Kuganna is the current holder. Do we want Fothad, our cousin, to have that? Kugamna goes, Oh, minus 50. No, I'm not going to do that. It's not my call. Prince Fothad goes minus 5. I'd rather not have that either. How is... 21? You know, that's that's fine. If he wants to go press that, uh, that is on him. All right, victory 100%. Let's stand down, offer the peace. And we usurped the title county of Glamorgan. The war is done. We'll stand down our entire levy once more. And then we will get organized here. So we no longer need our chancellor there to fabricate claims. How is our truce with Scotland? Four more years. Certainly wouldn't help to get our um, chancellor up there, but I think, depending on what our vassals see... We can send her to improve with the Duke, yeah, with our cousin, who is uh, reigning in Waterford, Ormond. All right, let's send our Chancellor over here to improve those diplomatic relations. 
Let us. Okay, that's going to go away. One title can be created. The Kingdom of Wales. So this is interesting. This will give us claims down here on Devon and Cornwall. We will be a double king. But I believe those two kingdoms will pass down from our realm. We don't want to do that until we uh, are ready to form the Empire of Britannia. I am pretty sure. Because when we die, I do not want, like, my sons to, to split it up and have one be the King of Ireland, the other uh, be an independent King of Wales. So I don't believe I'm going to create that. One title can be usurped, though, the Duchy of Dehuarth. And uh, we'll go ahead and usurp that title, though, as it is a lower uh, title. 178 gold. All right, so now we are a double duke, which should be fine. New important decisions. We're not holding a grand tournament. All right, so let's make sure our vassals don't hate the fact that we're a double duke. No, indeed. All righty. Oh, hello there. That's where that was. I forgot my uh, troops up in Moray. So let that be a lesson. Do not forget where your liege levies are. Oh. Okay, Tannis Arcade has inherited the Duchy of Meath from our cousin, the Duchess, who has died a natural death at the age of 52. Interesting. So Tannis Arcade has 3,900 troops compared to our 3,300, and that is potentially dangerous. Very dangerous indeed. Luckily, he really likes us. Wouldn't hurt to send him another 53 gold and improve his opinion max so he doesn't uh, get any froggy ideas. If he was ambitious, that would definitely be the, uh, the end. So on death, the Tannis Urcade the Young would pass from our realm. So the Duchy of Connacht is out. Will he be the, the Duke of Connacht? Very interesting indeed. All right, so she was our designated regent. Arcade, you won't do us wrong. We want to make sure he is the most happy because he has the absolute most manpower for sure. And we need a marshal and Fothad. You are now our marshal, good sir. That's positive opinion. And uh, do we need you to train troops up here? Not really. So I believe it would be in our best interest. Let's see, 72 and 67... So for another year, that's going to be down. It, I think it would be in our best interest to train troops in that newly acquired land uh, to sort of offset that massive penalty we have. We wrecked his entire um, garrison. So this needs to get up to 1,000 before we can start getting any levy for ourselves. And then the vassal levies raised too long should go away over time. And Bob is your uncle. Hopefully our chancellor can do better. Since I've been arrived at Glamorgan, there's no shortage of troops. So plus 50% reinforcement rate here to get that garrison back uh, as quickly as possible, which I'm certainly not mad about. Let's check our religious vassals. Oh, there's one that doesn't really uh, like us. Well, here's 15 gold, good sir. Does that change your mind? Indeed it does. All right, so we should be getting all of our uh, levy from our... Uh, religious vassals there are no factions we do have two prisoners one that we can ransom 64 year old for 10 gold you know what um i actually don't even think it's worth it what claims does this lady have none ah let's just let her go so we are not going to ransom the prisoner get off of there we're just going to let her go Release her from prison, so she's not taking up space. Merciful, plus 10. And let's get back to this other prisoner, Ellis, who has no titles or claims. It's fine, we can release him as well. And we'll get Merciful trait, and he's dead. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So training grounds have been built as well, which is always good to see the realm grow. As far as our laws go, it's head to head. And we are voting for this guy, so he is the tiebreaker. Another set of training grounds, so our levy is going to go up fairly well, I believe. 
known plots, that's fine. And then a threat from Fothad. Plus five, our marshal. If we were to send him a gift of 56, I think that would be good. Oh, and we have a daughter named Ibin, which is fascinating. Let's see if that took care of that threat there. Training grounds, we went ham on those improvements, didn't we? Certainly nice. Let's see if we can afford a retinue. Nope, I don't believe we can, not yet. Yep, they're always up. Depends on your military organization and the size of all levies in the realm. We might not have enough troops to form a retinue, but that would certainly be nice for waging war as we would have a dedicated army uh, that'd be ready to pounce at a moment's notice. So when is our truce up with Scotland? 1170, four years. Is England in the middle of a battle that we can sort of seize this opportunity? Nope, they have a full 19,000. Mostly from vassals. That's nuts. Let's see, Ormond. Oh, our cousin. Plus 20. Now that's nice. Don't screw that up. I'm going to pull her off of that mission then. I believe, yeah, that's going to lower the threat to negligible as long as he likes us. So let's fabricate then on the next most troops. 1,400, 700, 1,300, and 1,100. Looks like Ross may be where we are going next. It should be quick to siege down. 500. So let's go for Ross. Go ahead and fabricate a claim up there in Ross. And if we're lucky, we can fabricate on the uh, the Duke, the Duchy of Moray. Oh, crap. That was fast. Um, 211 gold, though. But that is on the Duchy itself, which is pretty intense. We can keep that in our pocket. And Duke Patrick of Moray, well, he hates us anyway. He's furious. All right, so we have a claim that's ready to go as soon as that truce fires in four years. Let's not forget it. And it's on the duchy itself. So basically everything in Moray we can press. And the duchy of Moray, de jure, is all of this. So we can move up through Ross, uh, Caithness, and Buck Buchan, I believe. But that is going to do it for me and this episode, ladies and gentlemen of Crusader Kings 2. We got the work done today for sure, and we're already plotting our next move with Scotland. That didn't take long at all. Um, I believe that our Chancellor can work on our vassals uh, from here on out until we are ready to go to war. And there is one vassal, Dimnian, who really doesn't like us because of rivalry. I wish we could end that. 95% chance to kill him. How's the air? All right. That might be worth looking into, but that's going to do it for me this episode, ladies and gentlemen. Like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you in the next Crusader Kings 2 video. Take care.